The sun is up, the sky is blue. Today is beautiful day, so are you. Good day, Ma'am Pauline. Me and my group mates are here in front of your screen to discuss the chapters two and three of our research paper entitled, The Impact of Social Media to Awaken the Decision of New Registered Voters in Consolacion and Liluan to Choose a Particular Presidential Candidate 2022. But before we proceed, allow us presenters to introduce ourselves first. Starting with me, hello, I am Lizelle Marie M. Planas. I am Hermione Ogaba. And I am Kimleya Cabajo. I am Christine Joy Boyser. I am Carl May Pingal. And lastly, Justin Gelgalisti here, and I'll be the one to present to you the agenda of today's presentation. The presentation objectives are, first, discuss the related literature and studies of our research. Second, present and explain the chapter three, which is all about the research methodology. Can I call on Ms. Christine Joy Boyser to present, to introduce to you our chapter two. Okay, thank you, Justin. So now let's go to our chapter two, which contains a review of related literature and studies. So this chapter reviews some existing foreign and local literature and studies that explain on how the social media has been the area of interest among politicians to promote campaigns not only here in the Philippines, but around the world, as well as how social media platforms have been utilized by new registered voters or youth and how it impacted their voting decisions. So social network sites have now established themselves as one of the most prominent media platforms for election campaigns. However, the impact of determinants of social networking site usage on voter involvement, attitude, and confidence has received little consideration. New voters, on the other hand, have had a lot of exposure, exposure to social media, which has influenced their political ideas. So according to Dwyer and Martin in 2017, in a high-choice media environment, it is susceptible to misinformation, algorithms, and filter bubbles where social media platforms are starting to influence editorial and publishing decisions. It's critical to understand how this generation engages or does, it or does not with new stories about politics and current events. They are less entrenched in their attitudes and everything from risk taking to social action, technology use, privacy, political views, social attitudes, sexuality, and trust because of their unfettered access to a wide array of opinions, ideas, and views. So may I call on Ms. Justin Jill Galiste? Thank you, Ms. Christine. Let's move on to the next review of related foreign literature of our study. According to Peters 2020, because of pandemic, most of their interactions are now conducted online rather than in person. In comparison to previous elections, this reality has given social media an additional level of reach and power in 2020. At the same time, it is critical to emphasize that most of their favorite social media assumptions, social media will swing the election one way or the other. Social media is ruining or rescuing American public debate and will ultimately be proven incorrect. In this literature, social media has a negative impact on the elections, but in support of Peter's literature, Malia 2020, in a news article, the use of social media is worsening a horrible political situation. The polarization problem in America is even worse than they could have anticipated. Molya directly said that some of the political lessons we learned recently include that conspiracy theories have real currency. 
fake news can spread faster than real facts on social media, and that if we don't agree on a shared reality, more mundane things like political compromise will remain out of reach. Divergent viewpoints also change the flow of events in social media. Some people tend to hate, dislike, or consider other people different who have different beliefs and candidates to vote than them. If this is according to Science Magazine research, while well, some of the U.S. adults realize their news on social media, which is considered improper for some experts believe that there are many false or fake informations running across different social media platforms, especially when some media platforms can use some filter bubbles that, can, that changes the content in someone's opinion or article. And now, can I call on Ms. Kim Leia Kabahog to present more of our review of related foreign literature. Thank you, Ms. Galera. So, the next foreign review of related literature is from Your Research Center, Liga. The popularity of social media has altered the information landscape in numerous ways. Indeed, social media is now one of the most prevalent ways for individuals, particularly young adults, to obtain political news. According to your research center data released earlier this year, as more people are relying on, on social media for political news, they tend to believe they tend to be less engaged and as well as far less knowledgeable about the topic. They also found that when it came to political knowledge, those who relied on social media for political news appeared to score significantly lower. Whereas 45% of those who relied on a news website or app were rated as having high political knowledge level and 31% had a middle political knowledge level and those who ended, ended up get, getting their political news from social media scored only 17% and 27% in the same categories respectively. In fact, 57% of those who use social media as their primary source of political news were probably considered to have low political knowledge. With this, the people in social media are having a hard time find, finding someone that they can trust in social media, where anyone can spread their own interpretation of the news. So the last foreign review of related literature is from Wang PL 2020. Fake news, hate speech, and misinformation are spreading across all social media platforms. With the increasing number of individuals relying on, relying on social media as a source of news, there are concerns that such information may affect viewers who are unable to differentiate between truth and fiction, or news and propaganda. Voters are frequently victim of fake news during elections on any social media platform. For some, they tend to believe in fake news easily and it's hard for them to believe their real news. According to Wang PL 2020, voters' judgment and voting decisions were affected by fake news. He added that the politically neutral voters were least able to distinguish between fake and real news. And in terms of demographics, female voters were more likely to believe fake news than male voters during an election period. On the other hand, younger voters aged 20 to 29 years old showed lower discernment level for fake voters with lower incomes and higher social media usage frequencies had the lowest ability to identify between fake news and actual news articles. So to present the local review of related literature, let me call on Ms. Gabang to explain it further. Thank you, Ms. Kabahog, and that was our first five foreign literature, and we are now down to our next five local literature. And for the first literature, which is published by Arugai on the year 2022, it would be discussed, discussed by yours truly. Okay, so for the first time in the Philippines, Philippine history, a presidential election was held in the midst of worldwide pandemic. With a limited physical contact, people are now turning to social media for updates 
and since it can also reach globally a lot more convenient than when doing it um, physically which is we have to attend physically and in an article published by Arugai entitled stronger social media influence in the 2022 Philippine election stated that social media is expected to influence this year's election and Filipinos relying on social media is expected to rise given the fact that social media usage of Filipinos continues to increase which is also caused by the pandemic. Experts even argue that social media isn't the best platform when we talk about political purposes for a reason that social media has a very rampant with this information with this information circulating in every media but it was also added that as these technologies evolve some of them had began noting that it could be possible for political candidates to use these medias furthermore social media and electoral campaigns might be might be a perfect match wherein social media serves as the profit motive of the tech companies and electoral campaigns which wish to garner votes from these individuals. And for the next local literature, let me call on Miss Pingal and have the findings discussed to you. So thank you, Miss Ogabang. So we are now on the second local review of related literature. Despite the pandemic that is going on, it doesn't affect the number of youth voters that will be voting on the upcoming 2022 election. According to Commission on Elections Director James Jimenez on CNN Philippine News on 2021, it is officially recorded that as of July 2021, there are 60.46 million Filipinos that has been registered for 2022 elections. And 31.41 million voters were classified as youth voters and the age ranges from 18 to 40 years old. It accounts for 52% of the total registered voters in the Philippines and will apparently have an impact on the 2022 presidential election to be held on May 9, 2022. It has been observed and proved by the past two elections that youth vote takes a significant percentage of votes, which had a major effect on the country's political atmosphere. And according to Briones on 2021, it is essential that the youth's voice will be here and able to cultivate their critical thinking related to national affairs. And it is also the way to remind and teach them to practice the right to vote for the good of the country. Next, let me call Ms. Ugabang again to present the next local review of related literature. Thank you for that, Ms. Kimball. So for the next local literature in an article written and published by Buena Obra on the year 2016 the Philippines number of social media continues to increase which with this reason political parties grabs this opportunity or maybe we can call it as an advantage to obtain political supporters or voters although it helps political candidates to connect with their supporters it is still up to the electorates to assess and determine which reports and posts are accurate and is completely misleading. And for the next literature, let me call let me call on Miss Pengol again to discuss its findings. Thank you again, Ms. Ogabang. It will be the first time that the election will be happen in the new normal situation. It is different from previous elections as both presidential aspirants and voters faces challenges brought by pandemic, as said by Chris Mundo on 2021. Yet, youth voters' percentage rises and will surely make a huge impact on the result of the election and the upcoming 2022 presidential elections. It greatly shapes the nation's future that youth will vote for the leaders that are comprehensive and competitive stated by Roperos on 2021. As youth make a sizable proportion of the Philippines' voting population proven by the stated statistics before. And for the last local review of related literature, let me call Ms. Planas to present it. Thank you, Ms. Pingal. 
For the last local literature, it was from A New Mind 2022. It stated that Filipinos have been reigning its top spot worldwide in terms of social media usage, wherein Instagram at 37.42%, followed by YouTube 35.96%, Facebook 18.77%, and lastly, Twitter at 17.85%. These social media platforms dominated the top four influencer marketing campaigns in the Philippines as of 2021. These social media platforms have been used in previous elections and now to communicate campaign ideas and platforms, measure campaign progress, allow candidates to respond to critics, and raise public awareness. However, online interactions can lead to a new kind of misleading news that can sway people's ideas and people's voting decisions. That's all for foreign and local literature. So now let us move forward to the foreign studies that will be discussed by Ms. Galeste. Thank you, Ms. Planas. We are now in Chapter 2, Foreign Review of Related Studies. Several studies have been conducted on different contexts and problems. The following studies are conducted outside the country that is related to our study. Firstly, we all know that there are so many social media platforms running in the internet right now. One of those platforms is Facebook. In 2018, Levon made a survey to the 67 candidates who were running for the position of mayor about their opinions on Facebook use, the benefits and downsides of political participation on Facebook, and the perceived impact of Facebook activity on election results. According to the findings, competitors view Facebook as a platform that provides chances while also posing risk. Moreover, they believe that being on Facebook is a requirement. They do not feel that being active on Facebook boosts the number of votes they receive, but they are confident that not being on active on Facebook would affect their election chances. Can I call on Ms. Kim Leia Kabahog to present to you another foreign review of related study in this research paper? Thank you, Justin. The next foreign review of related studies is from NTS Wati D, Mariani E, Sudania D, and Venus A, 2021. Traditional media plays a major role in raising public awareness in previous years, but over a period of time, social media becomes an, an important communication tool in sharing and disseminating political information, especially to the first time voters whose main reference is political news, is social media. First-time voters who are mainly new or younger voters are in increasingly turning to social media platforms as a source in getting news and learn about political politics. In the research study conducted by NTS Wati B, Mariani E, Sudan D, and Venus A, 2021, they investigate the effect of the interaction of the two different media the traditional media and social media as the primary case sources of information used by the first-time voter in making voting decisions. Findings indicate that both social media and traditional media influence the voting decision of the first-time voters. It is important to note that the interaction between social media and traditional media influence voting decision of the first-time voters negatively. Although the interaction between social media a major source of critical information and is important to supplement the student's decision making. To present the next foreign review of related studies, let me call on Ms. Galaste. Thank you, Ms. Kim. 
let's move on to the next foreign review of related study. Well, according to Dangkwa and Mensa, in the year 2021, social media platforms have opened up new avenues for politicians to communicate with voters as a result of the digital economy. Dangkwa and Mensa studied on how politicians in Ghana use social media to spread political messages and how this affects young voters' political awareness, efficacy, and involvement. The data was analyzed using structural equation modeling and a quantitative method was used. The study revealed that political message rapid spread on social media has a favorable and significant association with young voters' political participation, political awareness, and political efficacy. Overall, the data suggested that the usage of social media could improve political engagement, particularly among young voters. And now I'll be giving the floor to Ms. Christine to report another foreign review of related study of our research. Okay, so thank you, Justin. So, all social media users are exposed to political information through social media platforms in a variety of ways, including by primar primarily following news outlets, subscribing to information from political actors, and being randomly exposed to political content shared by others. So questions concerning the effects of reaching voters with this new kind of digital and political communication have been highlighted in the aftermath of the U.S. 2016 election. So social media, user, uh, social media sources have the ability to influence voters not only by the slant of a given story, but also by the stories they choose to cover. So voters with prior political knowledge who are exposed to social media political matters are more likely to turn out beliefs from their preferred political candidate as a result of the immediate transmission of content information and social media sites. Now let's call on Justin Gilgalise to add more information. Thank you, Ms. Christine. And now we are on the last part of our review of related foreign studies, so let's go and finish this up. Alcott and Gensko 2017 conducted a study about the credibility of information people often see and read online. On 2016 U.S. election, many people have voiced worry about the impact of misleading articles, sometimes known as fake news that have been widely disseminated on social media prior to the election. They concluded the following. First, while social media was a significant but not dominating source of election news, only 14% of Americans said it was their most important source. Second, of the known bogus news items that occurred in the three months leading up to the election, Pro-Trump tales were shared 30 million times on Facebook, while pro-Clinton ones were, short, were shared 8 million times. Third, in the months leading up to the election, the average American adult saw one or several false news items with just over half of those who saw them believing them. Fourth, people are considerably more likely to believe news that support their favored candidate particularly if they have radically divided social media networks. Can I call on Ms. Lizelle Marie Planas to discuss you about our review of related local studies? Thank you, Ms. Galeste. We are down to the final part of Chapter 2. So in this part, we will be discussing the local studies that are related to our present study. So the first local study is by Bunkin 2019, entitled, The Effects of Social Media Use and Political Communication Networks on the Filipino Youth's Political Participation. The findings shows that there is a significant relationship between social media use of Filipino youth to their political participation. It also reveals that 
digital media communication platform influences the youth's political participation. Social media offers various views for youth. The youth, as the world's largest social media users, may take use of the social capital available online and use it to widen their political participation and knowledge acquired and relationships created online to voice their concerns about political topics through political dialogue. Literature suggests that people who use social media a lot are more likely to participate in politics. So thank you. For the next study, it will be presented to you by Ms. Ogabang. May I call on Ms. Ogabang? Thank you, Ms. Planas. And for the next local study, um, on the study conducted by Al Kasid Villa Camp and AWA, uh, entitled Student Participation on Political Issues Concerning Candidates in 2016 Philippine Presidential Election, stated that even candidates created their own social media accounts to gain political voters, I mean, potential voters. It even showed that the former President Rodrigo Duterte was the most preferred president by those students who are active in their social medias. With multiple survey that they conducted, it proves that Facebook being the most used application of individuals also shows that there are thousands of informations, both fake and useful, which we can obtain by just merely scrolling on this app. In contrary to that, their study also claimed that although Duterte was the most favored candidate by those students, on the year 2016, President Rodrigo Duterte's present presence in social media was not really high if you expected it to be high, which explains that there might be a significant impact when individuals actively engage in their social medias to obtain political updates and more. For the next local study, let me call on Ms. Pingol. So thank you, Ms. Ogabang. Moreover, in the research, youth and political participation in the Philippines, voices and themes from a democracy project by Wilhelmina El Cabo on 2018, it was concluded that youth are not detached from the political undertaking within the country. And they are a promising era of political activists whose energies, eagerness, and yearnings can be mobilized and harnessed to reinforce low base forms and accomplish their goals for a good government and society. This research draws from a democracy project that involves young university students. And by constructing a content analysis that includes focus group and reflection papers, it enables students to share their insights, views, and feelings regarding to their participation in the project and on the political aspects. On the conclusion, this democracy project recommends that an effective method to empower youth or students is direct youth engagement. And by participating in the project, it allows them to see the value of their participation in the political process. On the upcoming 2022 elections, as Lopez said, youth that are new registered voters take a huge portion of the total registered voters and will play a huge role in deciding the next Philippine leaders. And it is said by Cabo and her research that even as they recognize the flaws and deficiencies in the political system, they are still interested in political participation, not just in voting, but also in other activities that promote democracy and good governance. To present the next local review of related studies, let me call Ms. Ogabang. Thank you, Ms. Pengol. So for the second to the last um, study, in addition to the previous studies, Ibardaleza study about the exposure to social media and their radical involvement to societal issues stated that the public today is believed to be more inclined on the various issues circulating in these social media. It gives them a greater perspective or access to politics or any other societal concerns through social media. They also added that even youths at aged 13 to 19 years old utilizes social media to access political and societal concerns. Moreover, 
The findings in their study also stated that social media has aided millennials' political comprehension. And for the last local study, the findings will be discussed to you by Ms. Planas. So for the last study, it was from Inesian, entitled The Influence of Facebook to Voters' Political Practices. So additionally, people use social media to discuss topics such as social studies, health, beauty, entertainment, and even politics. It became a way for individuals to keep in touch despite their geographical distance. Facebook is one of them. Because of its simple navigation and accessibility, its user base is growing by the day. As a result, it has lead the way for political campaigns since it may reach millions of people with just one post. On the contrary of previous studies, according to Inusian, social media, specifically Facebook, played an important part in political process by allowing politicians to share their platforms. Posting and sharing political material, on the other hand, did not promote or persuade people to vote for a certain candidate. However, there is a significant difference in people's use of social media before and during a pandemic. Physical connections are strongly discouraged to avoid the transmission of the virus. Hence, social media plays a significant role in people's life, particularly in communication and information. The aforementioned articles and studies were important and related to our research topic because our study deals with timely happenings in our country, which is the election 2022. Whereas, it was the first election held amidst the global pandemic, which social media becomes a game changer in terms of disseminating news to the globe, to the people. The mentioned articles and studies would help us draw conclusions and make comparisons with the data or results that we would gather. For the chapter three, it will be introduced to you by Ms. Ogabang. Thank you, Ms. Planas, and that has been our chapter two, which is the foreign and local literature and study. We will now be moving on with our chapter three, which is the research methodology. For the first topic under the chapter three, which is the research design, it will be discussed to you by Ms. Boyser. So thank you. Okay, so this study used a quantitative research and descriptive research approach to obtain information about the impact of social media to awaken the new registered voters' decision to choose a particular presidential candidate 2022. So due to the nature of the study, the researchers will collect data utilizing survey questionnaires to evaluate and interpret data from respondents. So the researchers use the quantitative method to evaluate and scrutinize data obtained from the chosen respondents. So the researchers employed a random sampling strategy in the study since the respondents were picked randomly from the youth of uh, Consolacion and Liluan, who are also new registered voters. So the descriptive technique, on the other hand, was employed to collect data that, methodical, that methodically described the situation and provided vital information of the study. So let's call on Ms. Ugabang for the sampling technique. Thank you, Ms. Boyster. So for the sampling technique, before I mention, mention what the technique we decided to use, I would like to elaborate the factors why we ended up using this particular technique. It was as what you have seen on your screens, all the respondents would be coming from these two municipalities, which is Liloan and Consolacion, of course, lo located here in Cebu, Philippines. These respondents should be at ages 18 and up, and they would be chosen at random. And that is how we ended up using random sampling as our, as our sampling technique. 
And for the subjects of the study, let me call on Ms. Cabajo. Thank you, Ms. Ugabang. So the subjects involved in the study are the youth that are new registered voters in Consolacion and Diluan, who will cast their first vote in Kamilari. Those youth aged 18 and 18 and up who is new registered voters were chosen as a subject of the study. The study sample consisted of 100, 100 new registered voters. The voters' respondents will serve as the main sources of information and with whom the data on the impact of social media to new registered voters will be collected from. The, research, the researchers choose these respondents because they are relevant and applicable to the study. The researchers wanted to know if social media did influence the voter decision in choosing a candidate to present the next part of the chapter three. Let me call on Ms. Galaste. Thank you, Ms. Kim Leia. And now let me tell you about what instrument we're going to use in gathering our data and how we'll be gathering this data of ours. So the research instrument that the study will use is a survey instrument. The researchers made a questionnaire and formulated questions to know the impact of social media to awaken the decision of the new registered voters specifically in Consolacion and Diluan, to choose a particular presidential candidate 2022. The form contains a two-part Likert scale. The question first asks the respondents' demographics, such as name, age, gender, and if they are registered voters or not. Then, the first part, which is entitled Social Media, this section asks what specific social media platforms does respondents get any political information and see campaigns on their phones <clears throat> or gadgets. After that, there's a Likert scale asking the rating of the respondents' agreement to certain questions about the content of social media. Finally, there's another Likert scale to use assessing respondents' social media content awareness. When the questionnaire is completed, the researchers will distribute the link to the chosen respondents who are the new registered voters in the municipality of Consolacion and Liluan through Messenger. The service construction and implementation have been confirmed to aid in establishing the impact of social media on their voting decisions, as well as how they verify the accuracy of the information they obtain online. And now, can I call on Ms. Carol May Pingol to explain to you the flow of our data gathering process. So, thank you, Ms. Galeste. So, after the research instrument has been decided and approved, then collecting of data will be the next part. The researchers collect data by using a survey questionnaire that includes the demographics of the respondents and the questions that are answerable by a Likert scale. On the other hand, the letter or the consent form will be put on the first part of the survey forms that is needed to be agreed or consent by the respondents. After formulating both the questionnaires and letter, the distribution of the survey will be the next step. The questionnaire is distributed randomly to the 100 participants in Consolacion and Liluan who are newly registered voters. The respondents were given a sufficient time frame to respond well. While the respondents are being monitored and checked by us, the researchers, so that the responses will not exceed and to check if the respondents are already done with answering it. After a few days, the respondents' data has been successfully collected. Then, the next step that the researchers will do will be the tabulating and interpreting the data gathered. Then, after tabulating and interpreting the data gathered, the researchers will construct the conclusion based on the survey conducted. For the stati statistical treatment, let me give the floor to Ms. Planas to discuss it. Okay, so for the statistical treatments, 
So the result of our study will be presented. So the researchers employ descriptive statistics. This kind of statistical treatment will help us summarize, describe the data and information that we have collected from our respondents through survey questionnaires. So for the first statistical treatment is the simple percentage. So it will be used by us researchers to analyze the demographic profile variables of the respondents with the following formula. P equals F over N multiplied by 100, where P equals percentage, F equals frequency for each category, N is equals to the total number of respondents, and 100 is a constant multiplier. For the second statistical treatment is the weighted mean. It is a statistical tool used to compute for the weight of responses in sections of the questionnaire wherein Likert scale was utilized. The formula is WM equals summation FW over N, wherein WM equals weighted mean, the summation symbol, F is the frequency for each option, W is the assigned weight, and lastly, N is the total number of frequencies. So the following are verbal interpretations of the weighted mean. As mentioned earlier by Ms. Galeste during her presentation for data gathering instrument, as you remembered, she mentioned the three Likert scales. So now here are those three Likert scales and its descriptive interpretations. So for instance, in part two, contents and social media, if the weight of the responses of the respondents ranges from 4.21 to 5.00, then it would be interpreted as they strongly agree to the given statement in the questionnaire. The same goes with other tables. So that's all, thank you. May I call on Ms. Carol? The virtual floor is all yours. Plan us our presentation on the chapters two and three of our research paper, which is entitled The Impact of Social Media to Awaken the Decision of New Registered Voters in Consolacion and Liluan to choose a particular presidential candidate 2022. Always remember that, always smile, and don't let other things stress you out. And that would be all. Thank you.